Hey there, how are you? Um, it's really weird because with this camera the way it is on my iPad, it looks like I'm looking off camera, so I don't know how to make this better. Um, I feel like the question is, are we there yet? Have we been, been in this car long enough? That's what I feel like, like a station wagon full of my family. My dad drove us to the East Coast and there were eight of us in a station wagon. And every day my mother gave us 50 cents and we had to split it between, there were six kids, so I was three older, three younger, and one of the olders had to share with one of the youngers and 50 cents to get candy and treats on our little breaks. My father never really braked for anything. He just kind of said, there's, there's the magnetic hill. We're like, can we get out? No. And uh, we, we drove to the East Coast. And then one day I'd convinced my brother Vernon that we should buy some itching powder and put it down people's back in a station wagon. And that's kind of the way I feel every day since COVID-19. Just like someone's sticking itching powder in a, in, a, in a car and we're all stuck in this stinking car together and none of us want to travel where we're traveling. It's not fun. So I have to find some mercy in all of this. Um, and I was thinking, you know, as, can, as uh, human beings, we are a species who loves telling stories. You know, we sit around the campfire and we tell a story, and we've done that since the beginning of mankind. Now we're sitting around the Facebook and telling our stories. Everyone's just telling their stories because people want story. We hold on to story. So we have to be careful, though, that the stories that we're being fed every day don't overpower us. You know, um, now, I just want to tell you the components of a good story. I teach writing classes this, that when you hear the word suddenly, you know something good's about to happen. And um, in my own life, I've had many suddenlies where you're going one direction and then suddenly you're going in another. And when you are in the middle of a suddenly, sometimes you choose like, hey, you know what? I didn't know I was going to fall in love. Hey, I didn't know I was going to win that money. Hey, I didn't know my baby would come early. You know, and you go, oh, I learned a lesson. It was lovely. But then there's some suddenlies that just rock you to your foundation. And um, I'm going to tell you a little story. I'm going to read this. It's from a play I wrote. And I know there's a special place in hell for people who quote their own work when they're talking. But I'm going to just read this because it was written and um, as a play. And I just think it's easier than if I improvise it. Um, I'll just give you a setup. I was teaching a writing class. I was on Lake Ontario. It was a beautiful September day and the lake was just gray glass, so smooth you could have just skated on it. And I had all my writing students around me and I was teaching them what I just said, that a good story begins with a suddenly. And uh, I said that, you know, that what I just said, that suddenly means something exciting is going to happen. And uh, you see, I'd seen this play at the Tarragon Theatre. It was called Lots of Suddenlies. And it was all about that life is full of lots of suddenlies. So I liked the idea and I stole it. And then I told them that a good story means that the suddenly happens. You're standing there on a beach and suddenly a man floats up on a boat and he calls for help or pirates you know descend upon the beach or god burps and creates a new universe and they go off in all directions and i'm very proud of myself that i've come up with this premise <laughs> i'm very smart so glad that i can teach so glad that i'm so spiritual and then beep i hear these little ping 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 in my pants don't get don't get like that ping 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 went my pants and I look down and it's my brother Vernon and he's saying, call me, are you there? And then exclamation mark, call me. And so I go, take the call and it's about my brother Kevin. They got the biopsy back and he has glioblastoma, brain tumor, and he's been given a year to live. And I go into shock and I continue with the class and I have to say I'm brilliant because when it suddenly happens to me I don't feel it I just go into reaction and I'm and I'm I was I was just on cloud nine I was you know I was I was uh numbers were uh, rolling around in my head like a Rubik's cube did Vernon say seven percent and my mouth is going on with 
the suddenly idea. So I started saying, when suddenly hits, people are asked to go on a journey they hadn't planned. They'll fight it, deny it, bargain with it, maybe accept it. The five stages of suddenly. And I'm like, yeah, I came up with that idea in the moment. And I'm just like friggin' Tony Robbins. You know, I could I walked on fire by the end of the afternoon. So I get to the end of the class. I just I just want to go somewhere where I can experience my emotions. So I get in the car and this kid knock knock knock. Can I have a ride with you? It's my my student Simon. He's written like forty thousand words about his cat. He takes every class. And he says, Can I have a ride to the subway? And I go, Yeah. And and I'm so relieved that he'll be with me for a few more minutes because once he gets out of that car, that suddenly is going to hit. And, um, you know, if I don't say anything right now and I chitter-chatter with him, I can keep the suddenly from being true. And I think that's what's kind of happened here. You know, we, I, I was like the perky one a few days ago, and then I cry. And there are five stages to this grief that we're having because suddenly, on a dime, the life that we knew in Canada and even in the world, it, it's too much to take in. And so there is fear and there is denial. And it does feel like God burped and created another universe. So a new story has begun. And I think we have to navigate through the story, the plot points that are being thrown at us every day. And if you're like me, I've watched a lot of movies and TV and I've written a lot of stories, so I like to jump ahead and see what they're gonna, like I'll figure it out, figure out. I've even read the end of the book. But the power is being in the moment with what the details of this story are and not just looking for another big plot point to freak me out with, but to stay here in this moment. Have you ever read a book that's so delicious that even though it's scary, there's just such good writing in there where someone has detailed? And I think we could just say, well, for the next few weeks, I'm just going to hunker down. I'm going to get through this thing. Or I could slow down and experience the multitude of many moments that happen in this new story. Some of them are horrible. By three o'clock, they might be great. Then we have a moment of connection. And we don't have to be able to see the ending yet. The other thing I taught in stories is that there's micro moments, little tiny moments um, in a story. And that's what I mean about staying in the day. There's tiny little moments, detailed. I teach writers that the more detailed their idea is the more people will be able to experience a universal truth. The more you detail your personal story, the more universal your story becomes because everyone here is having a human experience and no more true than in this COVID-19 time. So how do we slow down our minds just a little bit so that we're not just on the story of the doom and disaster, if we're not on the story of the things we're just going to lose, but that we can have at least a couple of moments, grace notes, if you will, in our day. I have studied acting at different levels, and uh, when I was about 22, I studied with, uh, it was called the International Festival, Film uh, Theater Festival, and I studied for about six weeks with some people that I still adore. And uh, one of our teachers told us this great little story about pygmies. Yes, pygmies, I'm quoting pygmies now. And they were in a rainforest in South America, and anthropologists came and recorded them. I didn't give them a contract or anything, they just recorded them. And they sang all day, these people. And, and what anthropologists were so interested in is that we sing eight notes in a scale and they could sing eight notes in between every single one of our notes. They could sing grace notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, little tiny moments. And I think that's what shapes your story, not the big plot point of COVID-19. It's all those little grace notes 
of how you coped. That's why I think we're holding on to all the little tiny things that people are doing that make us feel good. Or we can hold on all the negative ones. So that's why I, I talk about slowing down and being in the day. You'll be able to experience a little bit more grace if you can slow your breath down. So you could do things like, I'm going to do the dishes, but I'm going to try to have a little moment where I can listen to music. Or I'm going to put my kid to bed, and instead of trying to get them into bed and have it end, that I could have a little grace note in there where I can appreciate who they are as a person. Or today when I was walking on the beach, I try to look at all the people that are socially distancing. It's, it's like serpentining through the beach because everybody's moving six feet apart. And um, I had a very funny little thing happen. There was a couple and they were walking and she was just barreling ahead of him. And he's like, will you wait up? I, I'm married to you. We don't have to socially distance. And I heard her laugh and go, yeah, but I'm going to kill you if I have to spend another day in the house with you. So I found that very funny. So when we see these little tiny moments, then we start to think, oh, in that moment and in that moment, and then that other little grace note, I had some joy in there amongst the fear. I don't know if that makes sense, but it made sense to me today. Um, you put in a big day, another day is done, and just for tonight you can go to bed and you can sleep. And um, I'd love to hear your little grace notes that you found in this day if you want to share them. But if you're too tired, have a good sleep, and we'll see you tomorrow.